folks, today's video is not for everybody. If you're sensitive or if you're under the age of 18, you should probably just get this one over here. But uh, an incident happened down on the river. But once again, this is for mature audiences only. So, you've been warned. Good morning, folks. Lester here. Today, I'm going to be taking my goat head less, goat head less walking stick down towards the river. We're also going to be taking some goats for a walk. Now, we may end up seeing some alpaca and some donkeys as well. We never know. But uh, you guys come with me. Let's have some fun. We've not been to the river in a couple of days. Eh, a couple of weeks, really. It's been a while. Let's walk to the river and uh, take the babies for a walk. Uh, introduce them to the Garden of Eaton, to those who've never been there. The donkeys, the alpacas. And uh, even the baby goats may want to come along as well. This will be a lot of fun. And I'm hoping that you guys will join us. I do have at my disposal a box of gifted goldfish thank you all for those uh, they're absolutely the goats well they're the favorite snack to all our animals okay with no further ado let's get on our way you ready for a hike come on little ones oh here comes annie here comes all the goats they're gonna figure it all out annie and Annie and Indy are gonna lead the way. Hi, sweeties. We're going for a walk. Come on, little goats. I got the donkeys already here. All right, we're looking good now. Come on, babies. Come on, little ones. Y'all wanna go for a walk, don't you? Let's all go to the river, huh? We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Oh, onward, Christian soldiers, marching off to war. Come on, girls. War with the cross of Jesus going on before. All right, almost everybody's here. Only missing a few. Come on, Carrie, bring your babies and let's go, sweetie. Come on, Carrie, bring your babies. We are waiting for Carrie. Uh, she has the youngest of the little ones. She's trying to catch up to us. And he's like, where in the world am I at? Where am I? Oh, Finn, are you messing with my stick? I don't want y'all to go in there. We're not going in there. We're not going that way. Oh, Lordy. We're going to the river. We're going to the river. We're not going in there. Little, little goats, we're not going that way. Come on, babies. We're going this way. Come on, I got some snacks. I got some snacks. Who wants some snacks? Look at Indy laying down in the grass. Come on. Look at here. Oh, boy. Oh, this ought to work. I'm just going to make me a trail all the way to the river and get all these babies to follow me. Come on, Carrie. Bring the babies. Let's go. Everyone just follow Daddy down the trail. Guys, look at this. This place is growing up. We need to bring our babies down here more often. This is a lot of growth. Wow. Uh, I might should have put on some boots. I'm not wearing boots. Uh, as y'all can see, I'm just wearing Crocs. Probably not the best of footwear. Come on, babies. Annie. Indy. Come down, sweeties. Donkeys, you're up. Okay. This is the... Okay. Okay, let them figure it all out. Annie's smart. She'll figure it out. She can figure this out. Here we go. Come on, little ones. Come on, babies. Y'all keep following Dad down the trail. Friends, look how grown up our... Wow. This is something, huh? This is something. Hey, y'all want to hear a story? 
Let me tell y'all a story. Uh, what genre of story would you like to hear? Hmm? What genre? Oh, let's hear a scary story. Who wants to hear a scary story? Scary story it is. Let me dump out a few more goldfish, and then we will tell ourselves a scary story. <laughs> There was a girl who had just turned 15 years old and she was excited to be able to get her first job. Mom and dad had told her that she's very responsible and they're proud of her for the uh, being a good student, just being very responsible and respectful. And they says, once you turn 15, we will allow you to get a job to start making some of your own money. So sure enough, on her birthday, her parents put her uh, a listing in the newspaper for babysitter. Man, they showed her that after school and she could not wait to get the first gig. Well, sure enough, a couple of days later on a Friday night, she gets a phone call and it was from a neighbor down the road. He was a doctor and he and his wife were gonna go out to a dinner party and what they wanted was for someone to come by and watch their two babies. They had two little ones. So she, of course, she could not wait. She was so excited. And um, she told her parents. And on that Friday night, her dad drove her over, dropped her off. And then he says, listen to me, sweetie. He goes, you've always been very mature. Just understand that now that you're taking care of someone else's children, you have to put those kids first. You must put those kids first. Come on, go, come on, guys. You must put those kids first. And so she gave her dad her word that she would, in fact, put those kids' safety above her own. When she finally got inside the house and met the doctor, met his beautiful wife, they showed her all around. And then they told her, they says, listen, pretty much... You can make yourself, you know, free at home. Our mi casa es su casa. Whatever you need, just let us know. We have a pantry full of groceries. There's a fridge full of things you may want. If you choose to, we left a few dollars on the counter. You can call for a pizza. We don't mind if you use the phone, if you watch the TV, the cable. Just do us one favor and take care of our children. They mean everything to us. And so sure enough, she could not wait. Uh, the doctor and his wife finally got finished getting dressed and they left the house. And there she was in this big, beautiful home. The babies were already upstairs asleep. And so she wasn't too much concerned about them. <laughs> and everything was going great, y'all. Everything was going wonderful. Now, at some point in the night, she did. She did all of those things. She made herself something to eat, and she was walking around. She had called a couple of her friends, told them what she was doing. And it was just really exciting time, knowing that she's going to be making her very own money. She could buy herself, you know, things that she wanted for a change, not having to ask parents for money for this and that. But um, as the hour got a little bit later, and... As she's sitting there watching TV, there was a break in the broadcast. It was the news. The news report had, had popped on uh, with some breaking news. And sure enough, the uh, TV reporter says, we interrupt this program to bring you a breaking news story. And at that point, it showed a picture of a man. Y'all, he had long, red, oily hair. His teeth were yellow and about half rotten. They says that police are on the lookout for this fella. They can't seem to find him anywhere. They know that he was last seen at the insane asylum where he somehow found his way out. He escaped. And so he's somewhere loose in the neighborhood and they want everybody to be on the lookout. And if you see this guy, don't approach him. Just call 911 immediately. So, I mean, it 
a little bit spooky, you know, you can imagine how you would feel first time in a big old house. It's not yours. You're looking around and there's so many windows and doors and she got up, began to walk around closing and locking all those doors and windows, making sure everything was secure. When all of a sudden the phone rang. Yes, the phone to the house rang. And she walked over and she said, um, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Jones residence, trying to answer the best that she could. And she heard a voice on the other end. And that voice in kind of a spooky type way it said, have you checked the babies? She's like, excuse me? You better check the babies. And at that point, whoever it was hung up. Now she knew that was not, that was not the voice of the doctor or his wife. She didn't know who it was, but it certainly was not the voice of the doctor or his wife. Hey, move out of there. Y'all give me a moment, please. The little girl, after hearing that horrible voice and telling her to go check the babies, was just spooked, y'all. She was just spooked. But uh, she did the right thing. She went ahead and she tiptoed upstairs and she opened the door to the baby room. And she saw that both little boys were cuddled up underneath the blankets. They seemed to be fine, sleeping away. Everything was good. And so she didn't think much about it. She uh, walked back downstairs and sat back onto the sofa and tried to find her way back into the movie she was watching. And then a couple of minutes later, that phone rang again. Ring, ring. This time, she was a whole lot more apprehensive, but she reached over and picked up the phone. She goes, um, Dr. Jones residence, can I help you? And that same voice, you need to check the babies. Now y'all, at this point, she was a little bit spooked out. I mean, you can't, blame her poor girl it's 15 years old first time being off doing a job you know like this and she's trying to be responsible she would had the pep talk from her dad about putting babies first this and that and so sure enough she uh walks back up she checks the babies everything it all seems to be fine she doesn't notice anything out of the ordinary but that phone call and the voice on that phone call kept spooking her so she called her dad she goes, dad said, call me if there's any issues. So she called her dad. She goes, dad, I'm just kind of scared. And she told her dad what was going on and why she was so scared. Well, dad reminded her, he goes, baby, he goes, listen to me. Don't forget, you've been telling your friends all week long about your big babysitting gig coming up. And now all of a sudden, here you are at your job where you're being trusted to watch a couple of babies. And if, lo and behold, one of your friends is probably just phone pranking you. Your friends are doing that, sweetie. It's your friends. Don't let them scare you. And she goes, okay, you're right. And dad goes, but listen, just in case that person, whoever it is, calls back again, what you can do is call the 911 operator and just ask her to put a trace on that phone. And they can find out where the guy's calling you from the police will go put a stop to that phone pranking real fast. And so she agreed to do that. And it wasn't long, sure enough, phone rang again, same voice, telling her the same thing, you better check the babies. Well, this time she didn't hesitate. She got right back on the phone, she called 911. And when the operator answered, she said, operator, there's someone who's calling over here making prank phone calls and they're really scaring me. She goes, could you do me a favor? And uh, my dad says you might could put a tracer on the phone and see who's calling. The operator was a sweet lady who says, yes, yeah, sweetie, don't worry. This happens all the time. I will absolutely do what you asked. And uh, if this person does call back again, not to worry, we'll be listening. We'll find out where they're calling from and we'll send a police officer over there to, to take care of it and you know, put a stop to this person trying to spook you. So she felt a whole lot more relieved. She goes back to watching her TV show. And sure enough, within a couple of minutes, that phone rings again. Ring, ring. Now she reached over to answer, but this time she knew the police were listening. She wasn't near as scared now. So she answers uh, Dr. Jones residence. And there was that same creepy voice. You better check the babies. Mm-hmm, okay, I'll, I'll do that, she said. 
And uh, thank you for calling. I'll check the babies. She wasn't even scared this time, y'all. <laughs> she wasn't even scared because she knew the police were listening. And whichever one of her friends was doing this, they were going to have a rude awakening once the police showed up. Well, what was bizarre is that as soon as she hung up the phone on the mysterious caller, the phone rang back again. She reached over to answer Dr. Jones' residence, but this time it was the police operator. Yeah, the same 911 operator who she had just spoken to says, Samantha, this is a... Uh, Lieutenant Peterson over here at the police department. We just spoke. She goes, oh, yeah. She goes, did you find out who it is? You have to tell me which one of my friends was doing this. And she goes, Samantha, listen to me. I need you to do me a favor and just walk outside. Go ahead and walk outside. And uh, we have a police officer going to roll by there in a few minutes. And she goes, well, wait, uh, why are you coming over here? I thought you were going to go and find the person who's been calling. And you're going to take care of them. I can't walk outside. I have babies I'm babysitting. I, I, I can't go outside. I need to be here with these babies. And that police officer goes, Samantha, do me a favor and just go ahead and you can just set the phone down. You don't have to hang it up. Just set the phone down and walk outside. And our police cruiser will be there momentarily. But she just could not understand why the operator wanted her to walk outside and leave those babies in that house alone. I mean, she'd given her word, y'all. She'd given her word that she would watch these babies, and she could not understand why the officer wanted her to put the phone down and walk outside. Samantha just could not do what the officer asked. She just had to know more. She says, ma'am, I'm so sorry, but could you tell me exactly what and why you want me to walk outside? I have babies upstairs, and I just can't walk out and leave them alone. And at that point, the police officer said, ma'am, Samantha, listen to me, sweetie. We put a trace onto the phone uh, so that we would know that whenever someone called you back, where they were in fact calling you from. And she goes, what our computers detected when you got that last phone call, that the person who was calling you was in fact calling you from somewhere inside that very same house. Bah! Okay, that was a little bit uncalled for. Yes, whoever was calling her <laughs> was in fact calling her from somewhere inside that very same house. There is a part two to this story, but we're not going to do that one right now. We've, uh, we've kept you all long enough. Thank y'all for watching. The goats are having an amazing time down by the river. The donkeys came with us. Annie and Indy turned around and walked back to the house. They're like, we don't, we don't do scary stories. We ain't doing them scary stories. That's not what we do. And that's fine. But I hope you enjoyed the story. And uh, stay tuned. What we'll do is we'll bring the goats to the river more often. And when we do, we'll have us a story time. We love you so much. We're blessed to have you. And we will catch you guys on the next video. Let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.